In this video, we're going to talk about something called predicate logic. Now, a predicate, in the, in the sense of grammar, is the verb side of a sentence. In other words, the action side. And so what we're going to talk about here are actions. In predicate logic, the statements that we use also involve var variables. So where in propositional logic, which was in the last video, we talked about particular statements about a particular thing or circumstance which could be identified as either true or false. Here we're talking about possibly a group of things. And so for some it may be true, for some it may not. So we're not talking about true or false directly, although we're going to use many of the same symbols. So for instance, uh, we may want to say in predicate logic that uh, and let's talk about a group of students and their textbooks. This would be a good example to use. And so what we may want to do is we want to say um, we want a set of students to be symbolized by X's and maybe the set of books to be symbolized by Y's. And maybe we want to show a verb or action and we'll call it ownership, capital O. And this is now an ordered pair similar to what you see in functions. And so if we said x, comma, y, that would talk about a student owning a book. Or students owning books, depending on what we were saying. Um, we could also have another one, maybe L. It's a predicate, another action. And again, ordered pair, student likes the book. So, what if we, well, first of all, let's talk about how we can refer to these variables. Um, one way is, and the symbol is similar to upside down A, it stands for for all. Similarly, for each, if you think about it, both of those are really the same thing. Depending on the sentence, though, it's used in one state, one of the uh, uh, terminologies may be easier to use or more comfortable than the other. So for all, for each really means the same thing. The other symbol that we use in predicate logic is the backwards E, and that stands for there exists. And understood in there, although not always said, is the concept at least one. So notice the difference. The upside down A for all or for each refers to the whole set or all classes. If we said uh, for all students, we'd mean all students, not just one or two. But if we say there exists, well, we may not mean all the students. We may mean one student or ten students, but not all of them. Okay? So the upside down A refers to for all. The backwards E says there exists. So what if we wanted to say that all students own a book. Well, does that mean they all own the same book? No. In this reference we mean that all students own a book, but not necessarily the same book. So to write that in symbols, we would say for all x there exists a y where x is a student, y is a book, and X owns Y. Okay? 
So we could put and signs between those if we wished. Um, what if we say there is a book that all students own? Now the implication has changed. It really looks like here there is a book that is the same book and all students own it. The way that we write that is just a slight difference from the first one. What we would do is we put the there exists first. So there exists Y for all students. So notice the implication there. There exists Y for all students such that student X is a student. When we can put, if we wanted to, we could put and signs here so it begins to look like what we had before in propositional logic. So we could say and Y is a book and students I'm sorry, that's why we do it there. I don't want that parenthesis there. And students own the book. Okay? So now what we've done, the only difference between these two statements is that when, in the first one we said we refer to all students first, then we said that there exists a book such that X is a student, Y is a book, and students own a book. Okay? Or for each student there exists a book. And now you see where the for each kind of helps clarify it. If you said for each student there exists a book, then it doesn't say it's the same book for every student. But down here, we say there exists at least one book and all students, such that X is a student, Y is a book, and X owns Y. So there exists at least one book that all students own. All right. That's the introduction to the concept of predicate logic. And from that, we can write a lot of different... Uh, scenarios into code, which then begins to allow us to think about how we would put that into our coding for programs in particular. So that's an introduction to predicate logic, uh, and I want to let you go from there and see if you can handle the homework.